you guys one song let me tell you there's a song that I love um, and I just feel we should sing it right now it says victory is mine when I fall on my knees you guys know that song yeah victory oh victory is mine victory oh victory is mine when I fall on my knees and the Lord fights my battle victory oh victory is mine Victory, oh victory is mine. Victory, oh victory is mine. When I fall on my knees and the Lord fights my battles, victory, oh victory is mine. Somebody give the Lord glory. Just light up the screen, comment and give God glory. He's cleared the network in the name of Jesus. There is power in worship. When things are thick, just begin to worship the Lord. Don't fix your eyes on the situation. Even for marriage, when things are thick, don't look at how bad things are. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Worship him and bless him and declare just like the way we've been declaring for this network. I refuse to give up. I refuse to let up. Lord Jehovah God, even when my marriage seems to be weak, oh God, you're coming through for me in the name of Jesus. You're coming through for me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was going to say, there's a situation where if you're married before you are born again, either both of you and then the marriage breaks after you're born again, the Lord does allow for us to remarry in such a situation because a marriage is between two believers, okay? So if you are not you are not born again when you got married, I think in the case of Joyce Meyer, that's her situation, she wasn't uh, born again when she got married. She got married without knowing what it was. Then the marriage broke. The Lord does not hold our past to us. And when you get married to the believer that the Lord has sent, then the Lord does allow for that because it's a holy covenant, okay? But ask the Lord, seek the Lord, seek the Lord's face. Sometimes you can be married to an unbeliever. You try to hold on and hold on and hold on and you have no business getting married to an unbeliever knowingly. But sometimes you can get married and then you get born again. You can continue to pray for your spouse and that's the ideal. Pray for your spouse. But if they continue to philander, they continue to defy, you've um, continued to love 
them, to protect them, to stand with them, to pray with them. And, uh, you know, you continue to obey, you continue to be the vessel that God can use. And still the philandering continues, still the beating continues, still those things continue. You've tried the separation, it's still not working. Sometimes the Lord does allow uh, for divorce in such a situation because there's no covenant. There's no covenant. Amen. Remember also when we sleep with other people, the covenant is broken. So it's very important that when we come back together, that we rededicate the covenant. We rededicate the covenant because you're only supposed to be joined with your spouse. So you dedicate the covenant. It is critical that you, you dedicate your covenant. That you break soul ties. Earlier on, we were dealing with a soul tie prayer. So break the soul tie with the other person. It's ideal that you confess to your spouse. But in some situations, we make stupid mistakes. And the Lord allows for you to repent before God. And the Lord allows you not to necessarily tell your spouse about it. Because it might not be a good thing for the marriage. Because we're also called to have wisdom. But we need to fast and pray and disconnect ourselves. And weep as David weeps. In, in Psalms 51, but the best ideal situation would be to repent. But remember for the wives, uh, men do not take affairs very well, but ask the Lord. If the Lord tells you don't speak about it, then move on, don't speak about it. But if the Lord tells you speak about it, you must repent to your spouse. But don't go repenting and confessing if the Lord has not told you to do it. You can't break your marriage through that lack of wisdom. Hallelujah. But make sure the Lord, you have asked the Lord how you should approach it if sin enters. We will talk about affair proofing our marriages. An affair is a horrible thing. It really does a lot to marriages. The other point we need to note is that the man is the head of the home. The man is the head of the home. The man is the head of the home. Even if it seems like a rotten head, he's still the head of the home. So pray for that rotten seeming head and pray for the Lord to bring freshness into him in the name of Jesus Christ. And then remember, wives are required to submit to their husbands. But remember, submission is submission as you submit husband, dear husband, as you submit to God. Because then if, uh, you know, somebody is, say, in Freemasonry or Satanism and you expect your wife to submit and therefore come to the Freemason Hall, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. She's going to have to say no. Um, there are situations where a husband is just not leading the family in the right direction. And a wise wife has to tell the husband, dear husband, I love you, but I don't feel that this is glorifying the Lord and this is what I feel respectfully and lovingly and you know what I'm just gonna have to say no to this one because of this that and the other and remember it's things that don't glorify God things that don't glorify God for example your husband is telling you please pray for the network somebody just in just in to keep it for the network as you listen for example your husband is telling you you know you need to submit to me so I'm, thank you Jesus it's clear hallelujah thank you Jesus for that thank you oh God you're so amazing for example your husband is telling you that he needs to bring in another woman into the marriage but that is not godly you know he wants to have a threesome in the marriage he needs to go and bring in another wife you don't need to submit to that that is a lie from the pits of hell why would you be submitting to that refuse it in the name of jesus christ um and, and honor the lord in your marriage uh, that is not failure to submit um, your husband is telling you don't go for that kesha understand why he's saying it if he's just being defensive if he's just being protective if he just just wants to keep you in the house because maybe he's feeling scared or whatever remember you must honor god, god first before you honor your your spouse because god is first if the lord has spoken and said go you need to go go you need to go i remember when i was studying church my husband had not heard from the lord and uh, I remember this couple telling me that I cannot be a pastor because my husband is not joining me. But fortunately, my husband, has, he's such an amazing man. He told me I've not heard from the Lord and I'm not going to be joining you. However, you know, I cannot get you to turn against God. Uh, husbands, remember, and wives, remember, if you turn your spouse against God, God is a Jehovah Kana. He could actually remove you from the equation through death. Um, so that he can have your spouse. Please let us not attract the wrath of God. Don't stand in the way of God. Don't stand in the way of God. Um, it is very ideal to get a blessing before you go into a Kesha. It's very ideal that you go together. It's very ideal that you get the blessing. But if the Lord has spoken and your spouse is refusing and you're sure the Lord has spoken, then in such a case, the Lord does not require you to submit um, so that you, know, you can be seen to be submissive because you submit to God first above all else. But please let us not lie to ourselves. Let's make sure that it's the Lord speaking. In such cases, it's advisable to even enter into a fast before you dishonor your husband, you disrespect your husband, but in terms of not disrespect, but dishonor, but saying no. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Then um, a husband's greatest need is for sex, um, for respect, and for being honored, and to feel like he's a king in his house. 
That's your husband's greatest need. Did you notice I spoke sex first? I learned that from TG Jakes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He really teaches about marriage and is worth listening to on things to do with marriage. Our husband's greatest need is for sex. It's quite annoying for a woman because you kind of want him to put it aside, but that's how God made them somehow. So let us learn. Let's get with the program, ladies. Let's get our sexy out and let's just get really, really cool. Husbands, remember... It's really difficult for your wife to be turned on after you slapped her. It's difficult for your wife to be turned on after you've called her useless. It's really difficult for you, your wife to be turned on <coughs> after you've telling her, told her she's a slut or she's philandering and you're being mean. It's very, very difficult. Seriously. Seriously. It's very difficult. So be good. Imagine when you're very good to your wife and you love her and you treat her well. Honestly, that is enough. She doesn't need KY. And ladies, remember KY is your friend for those situations where you really don't want him even coming close to you, you can't even imagine it. But then you know you need to honor the Lord. Slap on that KY, KY jelly and as you're doing it, just tell him I just need to get a little sexy. Go get on your knees in the bathroom and say, Lord, I'm going to honor you. It feels horrible. I don't want him to touch me. And it's so mean and this is horrible. But Lord, I'm just going to slap on some KY and Lord, just show me how to minister to him. Sometimes you'll find that as you minister to your husband through sex, he turns and becomes gentler and kinder. Imagine. Yes. So are you seeing how the devil plays us? Oh, I'm not going to do it until you're good to me. Oh, I'm all, I, I can't love you because you're reminding me, you're refusing to give me, you know? Come on, come on, come on, guys. Let's honor them. Let's honor our husbands. Let's give ourselves to them, even when we're not feeling it uh, like it. And ladies, if you use sex as punishment, God doesn't like that. That's not cool. Don't use sex as punishment. Don't also use sex to manipulate your husband, okay? That's not a good thing. Sex is for ministering to your spouse, for them to know that you love them, okay? Um, and we minister a lot when even prayer is not working. Sometimes sex will work. Uh, sometimes you need to just stop praying and give him sex, okay? And just love one another and learn the styles, okay? And do those, um, they're called what? Keloids. They're called what? I forget. Oh God, what are they called? Those exercises. Okay, that my helpers are not helping. You know those, if somebody knows what they're called, you know the ones where you flex your uko down and then you let go and then you flex, you know, like you're holding back your ring and you count and you flex. Yes, it's very good to do those ones. I've never said it out loud, so I know how it's spelled. I've never said it out loud. I'm an African woman. So yes, you need to do those exercises, okay? Flex as though you're holding back your ring and then release. Then flex and do them, you know, several times in a day, like, you know, the way you exercise. And then when you're um, doing it, do that as well. Men love it and, you know, our husbands love it and they find it amazing because you're tighter and you're amazing. And those stories that, you know, you had a baby and therefore your down there has not been sorted out. God is, uh, please don't insult God. Don't insult God. He didn't forget to put it back together again. Okay, so let's do those kegel. Thank you, Atele. Darling, I love you, sweetie. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Yes, kegel exercise. Actually, what did I call it? I think I call it some kind of growth. Yeah, me. Okay. We need to end. By the way, I'm feeling very shy. Please just pray for me as I speak these things on me. <laughs> yeah, I know it's going to help somebody. So kegel exercises, do them. And then when you're having sex, do it like that. Yes. You know, I think we need to have an offline discussion to the married people, the married women. But be cool, be amazing, be be that really wild girl in bed, okay? The men, the, our husbands love it. They love it. They love it. Even the shy ones, they just don't want to tell you. Mm, but do it, okay? Yeah, men love sex, okay? Our husbands love sex, and we are allowed to have it. So have it, have fun, okay? Aha. Uh -huh. If you neglect your wife, husbands, if, um, if you neglect your wife, there's no manner of prayer that's going to fix your marriage. Um, if, ladies, if you deny your husband sex, no manner of prayer is going to fix your marriage. Um, so uh, for men, until you love to do your wife and begin to honor your wife, begin to cherish her, begin to lay down your life. So all those prayers you're praying, stop praying for a few minutes and just show love to your wife. Text her, love her, buy her flowers, buy her some chocolate, buy her even chips. Seriously. Yeah. Buy her something. You know, just buy her something. Even if you're not a rich man, buy her something. Amen. So men are supposed to love their wives as Christ loved the church and he gave his life for them. You should be able to take a bullet for your wife and she should know that you can. So that story of Shuma Razima Irare Dani, no. Yes? No, 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 no. And for those of you that don't understand what I just said, that is Kikuyu 4, come here, babe. Yes. 
you know, without any romance, without nothing. You know, you're just supposed to be open and available, yeah? And women, send out signals when we are open and you're feeling sexy. Send out, tell him, baby, I can't wait. And then when he comes, please don't punish him. Give him, okay? All right. Then um, the husband is the priest of the home. The husband is the priest of the home. So no matter how prayerful your wife is, no matter how anointed your wife is, even for me who's a pastor in our home, my husband is the priest. He's the priest of our home. I'm not the priest. He's the priest of our home. I do assist him by gathering the people together to pray. And then I say, honey, go ahead. Yeah. And then, you know, if I need to assist him with saying, honey, let's pray about this. Let's pray about this. And then I tell him, oh, sweetie, you really prayed well. And I thank God. I thank God. I have a husband who prays with such a heart for God. He loves God so deeply. And I thank God for him. I thank God for him. So women, gather them together, yeah? Gather them together, gather the children. Ask him, Suri, could you pray for me before you leave for work? Could you bless me? Suri, could you bless me before I go and preach? Suri, could you just pray over my life? Just ask him, prompt him, prompt him, help him. You're the helper, okay? So then um, the wife is a helper. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's the next note. The wife is a helper. Help him to become all God wants him to become. Beating him down is not going to cause him to become all God wants him to become. Taunting him is not going to make him all God wants him to become. Um, asking him, hmm, so at now you are preaching what? Hmm. And though in this house you are what? Don't do those things. Don't do those things. Find a reason to say, Siri, you're a blessing. Sit at the very front and bless him. You know, even if you're struggling, ask the Lord to release you. Be the one that shouts the amen more than anybody in that church. Be there for him as he is ministering. Be his biggest cheerleader. Be his biggest fan. Uh, tell him how amazing he is. Tell him how handsome he is. Tell him how responsible he is. You know, we serve a God who calls the things that are not as though they are. So begin to speak those things to him. You know, he's come from drinking or from wherever I'm praying your husbands are not drinking, but if they are. Is that the portion that God has allowed for you to be? He comes in, he's stinking and everything. Don't tell him, yuck, you're smelling. Don't even try to kiss me. Don't tell him that. Yeah? Ask the Lord to turn that alcohol into a disgusting thing. You know, and I was told by somebody once that um, there's a lady who prayed, and you know, Esau Basike prayed some very crazy prayers, and I guess she prayed two things, and I don't know if it's true, but I'm going to say it anyway, because it brings, um, you know, it praises her. If it's wrong, please, Sister Obasike, in case you hear it, please, then I was told by somebody the wrong thing. She, she led the ladies to pray two things. She led them to pray, one, if he sleeps with somebody else, let it be like Pili Pili. Okay, I know, sounds crazy, but ladies, yeah, you can pray that. Then she prayed a second thing and she led the ladies into praying that when he tried to drink, let it taste like susu of a donkey. I can't even imagine what susu of a donkey is, but the women came with testimonies. Gentlemen, please stop drinking so that your eyes don't have to pray such crazy prayers. But ladies, if you need to pray those crazy prayers, and when he comes home, embrace him. If he has an accident on himself, don't start saying, look at you, you're just a kid, you're just useless, you're just nothing. Serve him, honor him. Your love for him and how you love him, how you minister to him even when he's being stupid. He knows he's being stupid. He knows he's being stupid. He knows he's being foolish. He knows he's doing stupid things. He knows he blew all the money for the family. Yeah? Hide away kafangwe. There's something my mother taught me about called kafangwe. You know those jeans pockets, like a small one, that tell you if someone wants to rob you, they would have to move you upside down and shake you. And, uh, you know? It's called kafangwe. I'd rather die. Hide some money somewhere. So that on a rainy day when things are thick, when they are gone and messed, at least you can rescue the family. You know? But don't tell him he's stupid and all those things. He already knows. He's already struggling with guilt. She already knows. Some women are alcoholics. It might be the man who's married to an alcoholic wife. Wipe her, wash her, take her to the bathroom and wipe her and wash her and pray over her and cry over her and just tell her, I love you so much, honey. Everything's going to be okay. I'm here for you. I love you, baby. God's going to clean you up. God's going to sort this out. In the meantime, make for her a meal. She's going to be okay. Remember, there might be a situation when you're in your 70s, when you're in your 80s, when somebody becomes dis disabled or something happens and you do need to take care of them. You promise to honor, to cherish, to obey. So a reason like alcoholism is not a reason to leave your spouse. A reason like, you know, they're drinking too much or they're misusing money, that's not a reason to leave your spouse. Indeed, being beaten is a reason to break a marriage if you've tried and separated. And please don't stay in an abusive marriage. Separate. You must be tough. Separate. And then seek healing when you're separated and let them know, I've had to leave it, sweetie. I've text them, sweetie, I've had to live with the children because it's not safe for us, baby. 
let's work out this marriage i there's this counselor let's book a time whatever whatever and baby i love you and i want to be there for us and i want us to work but it can't work like this Imagine he's going to style up because he has to make a choice. She's going to style up. Some women beat up their husband. She's going to style up because you drew the boundary. And you said, I love you, but baby, not like this. We have to fix this. We have to fix this, depending on what she's been through. But it's not a reason to get out of the marriage and seek for a divorce. Work it out. There are institutions that help. If you can't find one, Pastor Kathy is here. With God's help, we will work it out together. And then, of course, be accountable in the time of separation. Check on one another. Be there. And, of course, infidelity. Infidelity is a reason for a separation if it continues and does not stop. I want to stop there for tonight, and I want to pray for you. We're going to continue with God's help tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father God, you're the author of marriage. And, Daddy, you know what? One thing I've learned about you is that when you make something it works i'm yet to see anything you've ever made that works that doesn't work everything you make is beautiful and indeed you yourself made everything and at the end you said it is beautiful so we agree with you tonight and say marriage is beautiful it's a beautiful thing oh god forgive us for the times we said it's a curse forgive us for the times we've cursed our spouses Forgive us for the times we said it's just something crazy. Forgive us for the times we said it doesn't work. We repent, Lord. We repent. Saints of God, just repent for the things you said about marriage, about your marriage. If you're not yet married, repent for the things you said. They could be stopping you. We'll pray for you in a little while as we finish praying for marriages. Lord, you over God, we nullify the words of our mouths that the enemy is using, oh God, to accuse us in the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel every curse that we've spoken against our marriages and other marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. We break those words in the name of Jesus Christ. We nullify them by the blood of Jesus. And in the place of that, we speak blessing. We speak the, 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 the love of God. We speak honor. Lord Jehovah God, teach us to work on ourselves, to become the kind of spouse that our husbands will love. Teach us, oh God, to work on ourselves, that we become the kind of spouse that our wives will love, oh God. Father God, teach us to be the kind of spouses that, Lord God, in our absence, our spouses are able to say wonderful things of, oh God. Father God, change me, teach me to be a wonderful spouse to my husband. God, he's been such a wonderful man to me, oh God. Not always, but indeed, Lord Jehovah God, in recent times, Lord Jehovah God, Lord God, you continued to heal him, to work on him, oh God. As you worked on me, heal me, oh God. But indeed, there are areas, Lord God, I can confess He's been way better than me at doing, Lord God. And thank you, Lord Jehovah God, for that. I bless my husband right now. Come on, ladies, begin to bless your husband right now. Begin to say the positive attributes on them. Husbands, begin to bless your wife right now. I bless my husband right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. He's such a responsible husband. He's never missed on his rent payments, oh Lord Jehovah God. Not a single day in our 16 years has he ever missed on rent payments, oh God. Not a single day, oh God, has he failed to provide for us as a family. Lord God, I love him so much because he's a faithful provider, oh God. Lord, he's been faithful to me and he loves me, Lord Jehovah God. I thank you, Lord God, he's not a philandering husband, oh God. Lord Jehovah God, I thank you for the way he's so disciplined he's in this exercise regime, oh God, that he's taught me to exercise, oh God. I thank you, Lord Jehovah God. I thank you he's a hardworking, responsible man who has never lost a job because he's not responsible. I thank you, Lord Jehovah God. I thank you, Lord God, that my husband does not drink, oh Lord Jehovah God. Even when I've taken wine, he doesn't like it, oh God. I thank you, oh Lord Jehovah God. God. I thank you, King of Glory. I speak wonderful things on my husband. I thank you for who he is, O oh God. I thank you that he defends me, O oh Lord Jehovah God. I bless him, Lord Jehovah. I cancel every curse I've spoken upon him, O oh God. I cancel all the times that I've said, O oh God, that he cannot make it, and all the other things that I've said, Lord Jehovah God, that are not consumed on this platform, O oh God, but you know them, O oh God. I repent, Lord Jehovah God, and I ask you to teach me and to teach us as women to be the right kind of spouse in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you just take some time? Oh, so we're in a Karibu. Karibu, sweetie, welcome on board. Hallelujah. Uh, Prince, welcome back. I thank God for you that you're back, Lynette. Karibu. 
won't you, if this broadcast has touched you and you feel that this is your prayer, that you want to be the right kind of spouse, won't you just comment right now as a form of prayer and say, Lord, teach me to be the right spouse. Lord, I repent for the things I've spoken against my spouse. We all have spoken against our spouses. You're not going to get embarrassed. Come on, guys. Let's be humble. Let's be humble. Let's encourage another person. Come on, just a few minutes now. Let's encourage another person. You don't need to say what it is that you said, but say, Lord, I repent for what I've said against my marriage, and I ask you, Lord, to cancel it. Lord, I want to be the right kind of spouse, oh God, teach me. You know, when you come into a marriage and you feel that you're better than the other one, that's a horrible recipe for marriage. Just, I just want some married people to just comment. Comment, come on, guys. Comment right now before we pray for the singles who are trusting God for marriage. Don't be shy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just comment, comment, comment. Light up the screen as well. Comment and just give your prayer to the Lord. I know I want to imagine that you're so deep in prayer right now. You're so taken by the Holy Spirit. But hey, I'm looking for humility. Just comment and say, Lord, I want to repent. Hallelujah. God bless you, Naomi. Come on, wives. Come on, husbands. Just comment. Just begin to comment right now. Can begin to comment right now and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Forgive me. Here I am, Lord. Teach me. Just something, one line, something. Come on, ladies. Come on, gentlemen. Come on, come on, come on. I'm not moving until you comment. I'm not moving until you comment. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my Gitonga, Karibu, my brother. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Comment, guys. Comment, guys. No, Naomi is all out. Eh? She's the one who's commenting, <laughs> taking one for the team. Come on, guys. We need to see humility in the presence of God. We need to be broken in the presence of God. Just comment. Comment something. Even if you're finding it difficult to comment what I'm telling you to comment, but you want to say, help me, Lord, just comment. Comment, say something. Hallelujah. And the network is acting up. Hallelujah. What tell Thank you, sweetie. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, yes, thank you, Lord, for my spouse. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You've got a fine thing going there, I tell it. Wonderful. You know, for the longest time, I didn't really know people who had good marriages, and I thank God that He's been sending people who have amazing marriages, and they're there. They have challenges in other areas, but they are there. There are some wonderful marriages in there. Oh, my Gitonga moves with the word. Brother Mike, could you just um, find what the word says, Proverbs 5, 15 to 20, and just post it there so that we can speak it out loud? Thank you, bro. I thank God for your love for the word. Hallelujah. Somebody else, I just need somebody to comment. Come on, guys. Comment, comment, comment. Don't let the network fail because we are being too proud. Just say something so that the Lord knows that you're surrendering yourself. Comment. Say, I'm here, Lord. Say, help me, Lord. Say what is coming into your heart as your prayer, as your prayer. Mary Flavored says, uh, I just called you Flavored, sweetie. <laughs> flavored and Flavored by the Lord. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord. There you go. There you go. It's not going to be easy always because sometimes there's so much pain. Sometimes there's so much pain, you don't even know where to start. But God is a healer. Obedience is a good place to start. Janet Jeroge says, make me the spouse you would want me to be. Forgive me for where I have gone wrong. God bless you, sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's power in our words, guys. There's power in our words. Forgiveness, forgiving the other one, begins with just that comment, Lord. As you say, Lord, I choose to forgive as I comment this, Lord God. Yanni, I don't feel how I'm forgiving, but Lord, in obedience to you, I'm putting myself out there and I'm saying, help me, Lord. Uh, help me, Lord. Guide me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I want to try again. I want to try again. Some of you are separated, but still, the Lord will come through. The Lord will come through. Prince Nyamori, thank you, brother, for being the first brother to, to surrender yourself. God bless you. Um, I believe this is the healing process for marriage. Bless you, brother. Hallelujah. What a powerful confession, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. From your, from your lips to God's ears. From your lips to God's ears. And there's power in men. Akim Ben, we need you to come here and speak. Amen. Speak. You have such authority. You have such authority. Come and lead. Amen. Uh, Watele says, as I learn to love you deeper, Lord, help me to fall deeper in love with my husband. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, by the way, sometimes men are jealous because of how we are loving God. You're loving God. And you know, oh, I love you so much, Lord. You're so amazing. And the guy's like, Namimi. Namimi. I know he's praying. Namimi means and me. I know your husband is saying, God, you know, she hears you. You tell her to love me. And then now you're still not hearing from the Lord. The Lord speaks and you're like, hmm. The Lord speaks and you're like, hmm. And then your husband is like, ah, this prayer thing doesn't work. This salvation of hers is fake. This salvation of hers, how come she's not hearing when I pray to the Lord? Let's be sensitive. 
to the Holy Spirit as he rebukes us. Mike uh, Lawless uh, says, uh, <laughs> that name, Mike Gitonga, uh, marriages must be Christ-centered and they must reflect Christ Jesus. Is Christ seen in our marriage? Hey, trust Mike to throw that one. Is God seen in my marriage? When I stand at the front to testify, uh -huh. sweetie, I bless God for you. We're just pretending. Eh? Honey, I bless God for you. Come here, the marriage is in tatters. The marriage is in shambles. May I tell by the way, my congregation, I tell them by the way, guys, things are thick. I have a group of women. I tell them, and I know I'm supposed to be leading that. Hey, this one now, Abana, this one. And they're the ones who tell me, hey, Pastor Kati, but the Lord said, the Lord said, a man, I hate it when they say that, but it rebukes me and it causes me to go there. I have single women in my, in my team, and I remember in my marriage intercessory team, I remember one saying, let me tell you something, I refuse that plan you have right now, because me, I know I'm going to get married and it's going to be happy. I'm not going to have a pastor whose not, well, marriage is not working out, because... I want to know that God works things out. So imagine you're going to work it out. You know, and some of them don't tell me because of wisdom. Then later on when I come, I'm like, yeah, he's so sweet. He's so nice. Yeah, we are so okay. And you know, they tell me, hey, me, let me tell you, me, I prayed. I said, no, I'm not agreeing with her. I'm not agreeing with that decision. I'm not agreeing with that thing. Man, there are some friends who are just amazing. Friends who are just amazing. And I'm surrounded by those ones. And it's critical that we find those friends. I want to read what somebody else has said. Yes, Christ-centered. So that story of you're preaching, you're preaching, you're preaching, you're mistreating your spouse, is shindwe katika jina la Yesu. What is that? It's defeated in the name of Jesus. We need to lay down that thing and go and minister to our marriages. We need to be able to break and repent and just say, you know, honey, I'm so sorry for what I did to you in the morning. Do you know, pastors, people will be so amazed when you do that. You'll be representing love. Yeah, I'm so sorry, sweetie, for what I did. I'll give you a few minutes, guys. Worship leader, just follow this. Honey, just come and go and just tell them, I'm so sorry, sweetie. I can't preach. I'm so sorry for what I did to you. I can't lead worship, honey. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Can we talk about it later? I'm so sorry. And you know what that's going to do to you? Because of that kind of inconvenience of having to come back and explain what you are doing in secret. Next time you think twice before you loosen your mouth and talk anyhow. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ-centered marriages. You know your spouse should be able to confirm that you were born again. Mm. If your spouse can testify without faking and say that you are born again, you're saved. Yes. And you know, we mess up our children so much because we come and fake it. Both of us have agreed we've got a script. Mommy pastor, daddy pastor. So we are there faking it, faking it, faking it. Then in the house we're insulting each other, we're beating each other up. So the children are like, huh? 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 So they go, no, hypocrisy. They pretend. And they don't want anything to do with this Jesus of yours. Because it's a Jesus of hypocrisy. <clears throat> All right. Mary Favored said, Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the new name, Flavored. Oh, you're so sweet, Mary. God bless you. Amen. It just popped out. So that must be the Lord flavoring you up, honey. Okay. And then Prince Nyamori says, as hard as it is. Um... But men, we have to love like Jesus did, yeah. That's a man of God confessing that sometimes it's so hard, you know. And some of you are married to strong women. I'm a strong woman, yeah. And I respect my husband because man, I've been a bit too strong. But he loves me and I know he loves me. But they, on a random day, he'll just bring me flowers. Yeah, I mean, there's a day he brought me flowers. I'm still remembering because that day I told him, I would take photos of me. I just come from swimming. So I'm in a swimming costume and he's taking photos of me. Because I wanted to remember that day. Because I just come from swimming. I've been working so hard, working out, trying to get back to an exercise regime. And he likes me bigger, but I wanted to be smaller, and he respects that. And then he just told me, honey, I bought you flowers because of the hard work. I'm so proud of you because of the way you're working so hard. Oh, how can I not? How can I not? Eh? Now, men, your wives are like, eh? Like that one? Yes, don't compare with mine, okay? They'll get there. It's taken us a while. We're going into 17 years of marriage. Mike says, God has been teaching me to be considerate with my wife so that my prayers aren't hindered. Oh my God, I've never had a man say this. And I love to use this scripture. Oh yes, First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. You know the way men love that other one in, uh, in uh, Ephesians 6 of oh, wife surrender. You know, I don't even know. You can see, I don't even know it. Yeah, wife submit, I'm sure some people know it. Yeah, wife submit to your wives. Now ask guys, for the women that know, you say yes, lest your prayers are hindered. There are some men who you're not making any progress, zilt, nothing, because of how you're treating your wife. If you mistreat your wife, 
First Peter chapter 3, verse 7, your prayers are hindered. Imagine, yes. And why is this is not time to go and floss? I want to read this comment a bit more. I've seen so much wisdom here. It is so easy to always want to change a habit uh, that my wife does not like, even when um, it doesn't make sense. Oh, oh, that's so sweet. Um, love can be spelled as considerate and learning. Oh, this is a man who's learning. Mike, I pray that your wife, if she loves me, she'll send you me. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. But I have known you for some time now. But you know, the only person who can judge whether you're a good spouse is your spouse, not anybody else, okay? Watala says, Lord, increase the spirit of discernment so that I can handle my introverted husband at his level. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. I'm very, oh, I love you in public and everything. And it's very easy for me to go like, you don't love me. How come you are not holding me? How come you are not, you know? But my husband always tells me, sweetie, it's not about that. And you know, sometimes you have to learn to put aside whatever it is you want. God bless you. Shall we pray for the singles? Oh, thanks, guys. Still waters run deep. Kumbe, you are typing, eh? As I was putting under pressure, comment, comment, comment. Still waters run deep. Love you guys. Let's keep on praying. Let's pray for the people who will also follow this broadcast later. If you're following the broadcast later, you know. You know the system, eh? Comment. There's that place where I don't go on a TV comment. Yes. God bless you as you comment. Um, consider your, your, your comments read and uh, declared in the name of Jesus. We want to pray for the singles and we can close. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jehovah God. For our single brothers and our single sisters. Oh, Lord, you're reminding me to pray for separations first. Lord, Jehovah God, we want to pray for those who are separated. We want to pray for those who are seeing this thing and they're in the process of divorce or are already divorced and they're like, now what? Lord, Jehovah God, even in divorce, there is remarriage. Mm -hmm. So we refuse to accept that divorce certificate in the name of Jesus. We burn it with the fire of the Holy Ghost now and declare it is ashes in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, rebuild that union, rebuild that marriage, even if they have given up on each other. Father God, turn, off the, turn on the spark in the name of Jesus Christ. They had a spark once, oh God. Fix them separately, Lord God, and just bring them back together, oh Lord. You did it for Brother Benny Hinn and Suzanne, Lord God. You're going to do it for this married couple, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. It ain't over until the Lord says it's over. It ain't over until the Lord says it's over. Lord God, for separations right now, we speak, oh God, reconciliation in the name of Jesus. Father God, we speak, oh God, a strength and a courage to, 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 to have the right conversations, to have honest conversations. We speak a, an atmosphere of no judgment in the name of Jesus so that people can be able to repent and confess one to another, oh Lord Jehovah God, even as we're told in the book of James, so that we might be healed, oh God. This is true for marriage in the name of Jesus. Lord, I offer myself, if any Anybody needs me, oh God, to just begin to help them to reconcile in the marriage in the name of Jesus. And I pray for such a time as my husband will be available as well, oh God, for us to do it as a couple. Lord, I'm believing you for that day because you have such wisdom. There are times, Lord God, I have no idea what to do with men, oh God, but he would know, oh Lord. So I'm even trusting you for that in the name of Jesus. And I know it's going to happen because you've said it's going to happen, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask you to send destiny help us in the name of Jesus, oh God. People who are not subjective, people who are not after the money, people who just love marriage, oh God, raise them up in the name of Jesus, Lord Jehovah God. Couples whose marriages are working, giving themselves out to give back to others, oh God, because Lord, you've given to them, oh Lord Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus, to help out marriages in the name of Jesus. Anoint them, oh God. We come against the attacks that the enemy will try to raise against them because of stepping out to help others in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak a protection on their marriages. Lord, I speak a protection on my marriage in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Father God, cause us to go out there and help one another. Lord Jehovah God, in those days in the African society when homes were involved in helping marriages, things worked more than they are working now, oh God. Father God, get us out of that story of privacy, privacy. God, Jehovah God, marriage is not about privacy, oh God. In some places it is, but there is somebody who's going to help us, oh God, on earth, who's Jesus with skin on, oh Lord Jehovah God, we thank you. And even without that, you are the counselor. You are the counselor, Holy Spirit. Enter into those marriages. Teach each person and oh God in the marriage to fall down and just say Lord God deal with me call them to cause them to call a time out and to say just deal with me Lord deal with me pray separately oh God until they can pray together oh God teach marriages oh God and married people to not get into the fight where, they, they, where things are heated and to just call for a time out and to honor that time out oh God and to just say let's pray let's pray God I found that so powerful so powerful oh Lord Jehovah God before it gets too far you just say let's pray let's pray Lord God teach couples about dates 
tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to step and tie together when things are good, so that when things are thick, they are fighting as friends, oh Lord, oh God, but not fighting one another, but fighting this enemy that has come into the marriage, because disagreements happen, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We speak healing, we speak shalom, in the name of Jesus. We command that every marriage that is separated be healed now in the name of Jesus. We command that any divorce situation be undone in the name of Jesus. Father, you've given us authority. So we agree with you, O God, and we speak it by the power and authority given to us by the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray for the singles. Hallelujah. Lord, there are women out there, O oh God, beautiful women, who love you so much that are looking for a spouse, O oh God. And then there are some amazing, handsome men, oh God, wonderful men, oh God, that are looking for a wife and just wondering what's going on, where is my rib? Father God, you are the divine matchmaker. Won't you bring a matchmaking situation there in the name of Jesus Christ? Hayaramashe terebo shaya, Lord, they are finding one another. They are finding one another. They are finding one another. Father, cause their paths to meet. God, call a convention that will cause them to meet. Father, God, cause their eyes to open. Father, God, if they have ridiculous standards and that's why they're not getting married, Lord, God, cause them to just get your standard in the name of Jesus. But Lord God, now, release your angels to just begin to bring people together and to match make in the name of Jesus. And Lord, cause them to walk in purity, cause them to honor you, cause them to choose to wait for you because Lord, in that, doing that, they are loving you more than they are loving the blessing. Let them love the blesser more than they love the blessing and it shall give them amazing marriages. Hallelujah. I cancel Lord Jehovah God generational curses of, of, of not getting married or broken marriages. Lord God curses our spoken sometimes even associated with somebody's name. Right now I cancel them in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that as God has prepared a mate for everyone, if he has a mate for the birds of the air, he has a mate for the crocodiles, he has a mate uh, for scorpions, he has a mate even for snakes. Yes, he has a mate for you in the name of Jesus Christ and he's bringing them. I refuse that you would uh, stop waiting upon God and give up and end up in the wrong hands. I refuse that you would lower your standard to the place of an unbeliever. I refuse it in the name of Jesus. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. The other day I met a couple and I was looking around their house uh, for photos, you know, because they told me they're newly married. I'm looking at them and I'm like, oh, are they children? No, actually, they hadn't told me they're newly married. They, they told me, they are, I mean, I knew they were married. So I'm looking around and I'm like, hey, where's the photos of their grown-up children? I was estimating their age and saying they have grown-up children. I'm looking around, I'm looking around. One was 49 years old. The other one was the president's age. That's what I remember him telling me. And uh, they were newly married and they had just gotten married the year before. So they got married, I think, at 49, and the other one was about 53. Wait upon the Lord. The lady blessed me as she told me how she's been counseling couples, how she's been working with couples. God gave her wisdom. Imagine she gave, even though she didn't have yet. And both of them had, um, you know, ministry going for them. And when they came together, power couple, beautiful couple. I love them so much. They are so wonderful. They are so amazing. And let me tell you, they are bowed to each other so much. Maybe the Lord is sparing you from an early marriage that will end in divorce. So just trust in God's timing. God's timing is best. Uh, Karetu Kawakavi, you say thank you, Kathy. May God bless you as you take us through these teachings. Amen. God bless you, my sister. Honorata says, um, learning a lot. Thank you, Pastor Kathy. Thank you, sweetie. God bless you. I love you, honey. I love you. I love you. I love you, Honorata. I love you, baby. I love you so much. I've been praying for you, standing with you. We are going to do this together, and we're going to weep on your wedding day. Yes, I sob. I cry, as you saw yesterday. I, I cry when the Lord blesses us. Mariko Inange, you said something else. Um, okay, Prince has said thank you, Kathy. Pastor Kathy. <laughs> yeah, amen, amen, amen. I want to honor um, Mariko Inange. She says, powerful, Kathy. God bless you. Marie, God bless you. Oh, you're a blessing in my life. Thank you. Um, Irene Moredi says, God bless you so much, Pastor Kathy. Hallelujah. I love you guys. God bless you. It's time for us to break our fast for the night. Remember, we are praying for men. So remember the way the devil was throwing tantrums when he said pray for men. We are praying for men. We are praying for marriages as we go into day four.
Hallelujah. As you go into day four of prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. God bless you. Watele, as you do this, I cover your home. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Yeah, thank you. Because the enemy does do that, isn't it? Amen. Thank you. He will not succeed. You come against counterattacks in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you guys for logging in. Share. Share. Tag somebody. Invite somebody. You're blessed. We're not blessed so that we can say, Nimebarikiwa, Leo, Nimebarikiwa. No. We are blessed so that we can bless others. Zila Maisaka Karibu, you're just in time for us to say the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Enjoy life. It's a beautiful life. Jesus came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Let's stop hustling. Let's stop struggling. The Lord came that we may have life and have it.